Hello everybody! Welcome back. We've got another Lord of the Rings The Third Age video. Uh, this time we are focusing on Morwen. Uh, I actually regard Morwen as the worst character um, <laughs> in the game. Uh, she is just... Uh, she's got so many weaknesses and it makes her really tough to use. Uh, you... Unfortunately, you start also pretty, you get her pretty late. Um, I, I don't know if it's quite halfway through the game, but um, probably around 30, well, yeah, 30, 35 percent ish, some way, uh, somewhere around there through the game, you get her. And um, I would say that probably her, her, her biggest issue here is not only does she have really, really low armor, but she's also got a really low con uh, constitution stat. Uh, and she doesn't really. There's, there, there isn't much you can really do about that, obviously. Armor uh, will go up as you get, uh, you know, more uh, or better gear, but even then, it, it's just not on the same, not even close to somebody like Idriel. Uh, Constitution, I regard that as kind of a wasted stat, um, <clears throat> so I would not, I would not build it. Uh, because even if you do that, well, she'll be a, a little bit more survivable, but, um, she, like... She needs to be doing damage. Otherwise, there's just really... There's no use for her at all. Um, she's at least fast. Like, she's got a pretty decent speed stat. And she does have a pretty decent dexterity stat as well. Um, so let's go over what I uh, have done. And I don't know if it's necessarily what I recommend doing. But um, let's take a look here. And again, keep in mind, I'm about halfway through the game right now. Uh, so some of the stuff, uh, at least with her gear, could change or will change quite a bit, but, um, all right, so she has, uh, her first, uh, tree is dual axe craft, which, to be fair, like, double, or dual axes is pretty cool, but, <laughs> um, but all right, anyway, so let's, let's take a look at her skills here, so double cleave, uh, just her basic, um, you know, uh, damaging attack, uh, warg bane, obviously, does more damage to wargs, battle haste, now, this, uh, skill is actually pretty great, um, this stacks, as far as I know, with Elven Haste, so she actually ends up being extremely fast, or she gets actions pretty quickly in battle. Um, the other great thing about Battle Haste is you can spam it. It's only 25 uh, AP as well, so, like, if you're trying to build uh, her, uh, her ax or dual axe craft, you can just spam Battle Haste, and that'll help you learn your other skills faster. Um, Rick Bane... You know, just like any any of the other like uh, character specific type uh, abilities, this does more damage to Urukai. Uh, Rage of the Maiden, uh, melee attack that does a lot of damage. Um, I assume that that must do more damage than double cleave. Which is weird that this is still a. It looks like a single target or a single strike attack. I mean, obviously she swings with both of her axes, so it probably. Actually, I don't know if that ends up being like one. You know, kind of like damage, um, I, I, whatever. I, I don't know how to describe that better. I don't know if this is, a, like I said, I don't know if this is a multi-strike attack or if, like, you do the, da if you use the skill and then, boom, it just gives you one damage number. I'm not sure. Um, poison wounds here. Uh, so she, this is one of, like, three wounding type abilities that she's got. And so that's the other thing with her. Um, she's got... It's almost like they've decided to split her damage, not not in, like, direct damage with, like, you know, Rohiric Rampage here, because this allows you to hit six times. It seems like they've intended you to, to do, like, wounding-type abilities on her. So she's got this one, she's got Poison Wounds, she's got Twin Wounds, so this one does great damage over time, and then she's got Paralyzing Wound as well. So, again, it appears to me like their intent was that you use her to wound, and it it is great that she's got battle haste because that actually would be really annoying to have to use poison wounds, twin wounds, paralyzing wounds, but yet still attack at the same speed as everybody else because then everybody else is going to outpace her anyway for damage. So it's like she takes a while to ramp up. Now, you know, the problem with that is like 99% of the game you're going to be fighting you know, whatever, you know, random enemies that aren't going to be super beefy. So, like, all these wounds and, like, damage over time uh, type abilities 
aren't that great in that context, right? Like, these are more geared towards boss fights, and there just aren't that many in the game, so it almost kind of feels a little wasteful, and, you know, whatever. It is what it is, and that's, that's again, that, that seems to me how they've decided to set her up. So I would say, you know, that's where she gets most of her damage from, is from these wounds. Um, but all right, anyway, sneak attack, a fierce melee attack that cannot be counterattacked. Very useful. You do not want more when being um, counterattack. Now, one way to get around that is to cast fear on the enemies, but you know then you have to cast another skill, so that's up to you on whether or not you think that that's worthwhile or not. But um, if you don't go that route, sneak attack cannot be countered. So um, you know again, uh, take that uh, however you want. Uh, paralyzing wound again. Now, not only does paralyzing wound deal damage over time, but it stops a foe from making melee attacks. So that is actually a really cool skill. You know, the fact that it does it deals damage, uh, puts the wound on there, and paralyzes it all at the same time. That's actually a very efficient skill. So um, you probably, if you're fighting a bunch of melee type enemies, this is probably what you want to hit them with first, right? So then you you know you can get them wounded, get get the damage over time flowing. And, uh, and kind of stop them in their tracks anyway. So very, very good skill. I don't know if that's her best, but it's up there. It's got to be up there uh, for useful abilities. Uh, Wrath of Penmark, uh, melee attack that allows Morwen to strike four times. So this is just, you know, as you get down farther, you're going to get more of these multi-strike attacks that deal more damage. So Wrath, Wrath of Penmark is, you know, right around the mid uh, mid area of her of her damaging skills. So that one makes sense. Um, stunning cleave, a melee attack that delays the enemy's next attack. Uh, as with all of the stun type skills, I find them to be fantastic. Um, they become less useful later on in the game as more enemies become immune to stun, but still an amazing skill. Uh, Velaris cleave, uh, melee attack that always hits. Now, she actually does have a pretty decent dexterity stat. Um, for various reasons. She starts with a lot, and then on top of that, she has a uh, passive that actually ups her dexterity. So I don't find this skill to be that fantastic, but, you know, it is what it is. Here, Orcbane, uh, towards the end of her skill tree, very strange. Um, I don't know why they, they put this one down so far, but whatever. Uh, a melee attack that does more damage to Orcs. You know, by the time you get this, I wonder if some of these other abilities are going to be more damaging anyway. So, um, honestly, I think that's pretty lame. Uh, and then here, over here, Rampage. Melee attack that allows Morwen to strike six times. Um, you know, unfortunately, though, it, it's, it's not that damaging uh, because she's... Well, sorry. In my game, she doesn't have a very high strength stat, so... Um, she's not going to be doing very much damage with this, but I will show uh, show that. But that is her allegedly her best, you know, uh, skill. I would say you know a lot of these other ones, like especially paralyzing wound, I think really outshines rampage because of its like utility. So, uh, all right, let's talk about the thief craft. So that's her other big aspect, right? She's all about stealing things. Uh, she starts out with steel item now. There is some equipment in the game that is only obtainable by stealing. Uh, right away, or, or almost right after you get her, you'll fight uh, Grima, and you can steal, I think, a, a pair of dual axes for her from him. Um, so, interesting. Always try to steal from bosses. Uh, there's some other, I think, items in the game, like the, I think it's called the Dwarven Ale. Basically, it removes any type of status uh, effect on your character. Those are fantastic, so... And I don't remember off the top of my head exactly which enemies you can steal them from, but that is an incredibly useful uh, steal. Now, there are some other things, like Morgul Decay, I believe it's called. That removes all of your opponent's armor. Those are also fantastic items. They're, um, you can obtain some of them right from enemies, almost right after you get her. Um, you know, So, steal is fantastic, and generally in any RPG that I like to play, I enjoy stealing. So... Um, I think that in this game, it may be not as quite as useful as some of the other games that I've played, but still useful nonetheless. All right, see skill. Uh, steal skill points from a phone. This is actually really interesting. Uh, when you actually try to level this thief tree, I actually recommend using this skill because see skill not only use, uh, gives you one point in this tree, 
it also gives you one point in your dual axe tree. So you're leveling both trees at the same time. Very interesting. Unfortunately, though, with C's skill, I think you can be countered. I think actually it's the case with all of these abilities. These can all be countered. So if you're using them, um, try to either fight an enemy that doesn't counter you very often or um, use the skill fear from the Shadowcraft tree to fear them first. Um, unfortunately, if you try to steal from a slept enemy, they will wake up. So again, throw a fear on them first and then steal away. Um, capture strength. Uh, allows Morin to attempt to drain strength from a foe and add it to her own. I don't find this particularly useful in random encounters, but again, more for like boss fights. I think uh, capture strength is pretty useful. Um, these are temporary stats though too, so don't expect that you can, you know, capture strength over and over and over and you're going to end up with a super powerful Morrowind. That doesn't work that way. The stats that you steal are lost at the end of combat. Um, steal action. Allows Morrowind to try to drain action points from uh, the enemy. This is a great skill. Um, I think though that, I think, I can't remember 100%, I don't remember if this is more expensive. We're going to find out here in a little bit. I can't remember though if this is more expensive than using the um, uh, the light craft skill like drain. It's like drain action or something like that. I can't remember. But also though, this one can trigger a counter. So that you know ability is better than this steel action. I would try to stay away from this unless you don't have you know light craft um, leveled on her. Uh, steel health. Uh, again, same thing as with um, the uh, Shadowcraft skill that basically drains health away. This can do it if you don't have that, you know, uh, that skill built up. Um, but again, you can be countered, so just be wary. Seize Dexterity. Uh, if you're going to spend any amount of time in combat, I would use this ability first. Obviously, stealing Dexterity is going to make it so that you can land... Uh, your attacks more frequently. So, steal that dexterity. Steal experience. Now, this one's interesting. I don't know if this is really worthwhile. I, I can't remember. But I also I also vaguely remember uh, certain enemies having more experience. Like, uh, you know, I think there's some, like, Nazgul out in the uh, Rohan plane that you can steal from. And I think, if I remember correctly, you can steal more EXP from them. Um, so, keep that in mind. It's interesting. And... Uh, it's actually a useful ability because uh, Morwen starts out at a lower level, really, than everybody else. And if you want to st spam steel experience, you can level her, uh, you know, really actually faster than anybody else if you really wanted to. Um, I just don't know that it's, I don't know that it's worth it. Uh, I can't, I can't really remember, but interesting skill nonetheless. Cloak of Plans, this skill is actually pretty interesting too. Allows Morwen to hide for a short time, protecting her from being attacked. Now... It's insanely expensive. It's like 250 AP, but it does make it so that enemies can't target her at all, uh, which I find to be uh, really interesting. I don't remember, though, if when enemies use multi-target attacks, if they'll still hit her or not. I just can't remember. But um, this is an, an amazing ability and actually uh, reduces the issues that she's got, that of her low HP and her almost you know, not having any armor. So a very interesting skill in a way to get around some of her weaknesses. Let's talk her passives. Um, Snowborn Sleep, uh, just like everybody, basically everybody's first ability, and I don't know why I never noticed this before, but basically everybody's first passive ability gives them the ability to dodge uh, attacks. Um, so nothing new there. Aer Lingus Ral Rally uh, increases the rate at which Morwen gains momentum. I find that lame, but it doesn't really matter. Um, because most of her abilities here, uh, you'll you gain pretty quickly because she starts at like level thirty something. So a lot of this stuff will already be learned when you get her. But um, you know whatever. Hands of Rohan uh, increases Morwen's dexterity, improving her ability to hit. So that's just a basic you know dexterity bump. That's awesome. Uh, Inspire crafting is interesting though. By the time I get Morwen, I've already learned all of the crafting skills on Barathor. I learned those really early because uh, I find them, uh, you know, crafting items to be incredibly useful uh, throughout the game. And um, I use a lot of those items post-battle to heal uh, my AP and HP back up. So um, 
it's a shame that you get her so late, or I think that this this actually would be uh, a lot more useful. Uh, but there it lowers the AP cost for crafting the items. Again, I, I you know do everything on Barathor anyway, so I don't find this particularly useful, but um, it is what it is. And if you've neglected to learn um, you know item crafting, then you know uh, try it with her. Uh, Justice of Balin uh, gives Morwen a chance to automatically counter at, uh, attack a foe who attacks her. So that's interesting. Normally, you know, you you'll see this in like one of the like it would probably be in her dual axe craft tree, uh, like um, Barathor's counter ability and um, and Hadhod's counter ability. But instead, uh, they put it in her uh, passive skills, which I it's weird. It's a weird decision, but it is what it is. Uh, and I just found that kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> Mare's good fortune. Increases her strength, improving her melee damage. I think she had this uh, learned right when I uh, got her as well. Um, but she does more damage. Uh, so passive strength, that's cool. Uh, blessive, blessing of Armor. I believe this might be the first passive I actually decided to learn. Um, it increases the armor value over equipment. Now, her armor on her equipment isn't that good in the first place. So I don't know if... I don't know how this interacts with your armor. But regardless... She needs all the armor that she can get, so I'll take it. And as a passive, fine. Um, I actually skipped over Overwhelming Blows and Potion Hastening and then went right for Double Attack. I think as with most every everybody's um, uh, passives, I think that this is one of the more powerful ones. Uh, and then Overwhelming Blows, while in perfect mode, Morwen's attacks will always give critical hits. That actually is nice. That is a great uh, crit, actually. And that is another one of those, just like Hadhod uh, basically has the same one, um, increases her damage while you're in, um, when, when you've got your perfect mode all the way up. So uh, that actually is really good. And that does make it so that she is pretty obviously more melee oriented. That and the fact that she only has melee skills and her other tree is stealing. Um, potion hastening. Uh, reduces the amount of time that Morwen requires to craft potions. So you can craft a lot of stuff um, more quickly in battle. Again, I've already leveled all of my um, you know, item item crafting with Barathor, so it is unfortunate that uh, you know you get her so late. Otherwise, I, I would actually think that she would... I mean, she does technically make the best um, you know item crafter, but uh, because I've already got that done... I uh, generally don't do that. Now, um, I think that's that's a good enough uh, explanation for her passives. Uh, with all my other characters, I did go over um, what I think everybody's route should be, but because you get her so late, you don't really have much uh, for options anyway, so I'm going to skip that. Um, but let's go take a look at her actually in combat, and um, yeah, I'll just uh, explain kind of what she's good at. Uh, let's bring her in. Generally with her, I would do like, um, I think I'd probably just start out with Battle Haste. I don't really want to use her double attack right away. Although, I don't know, maybe I should have anyway. Uh, but let's just take a look here at, we'll do Grace first. And yeah, she just got half shot there with one attack, so that uh, that should probably make it pretty obvious uh, that she needs to be protected, really, at all costs. Um, I am going to use Haste of the Elves on her as well. I don't really know if I needed to do this, but um, let's see what she gets for double attack. So uh, keep in mind, I have uh, Lightcraft and Shadowcraft learned already. Uh, let's take a look here. Steel action is 40 AP. That is terrible compared to Drain Spirit. Uh, and again, her Thief Craft abilities can all be countered, so you got to be careful with them. Um, so these are, yeah, these are really just knockoff versions of better skills. <clears throat> um, you know, if you don't want to uh, learn the Light Craft and Shadow Craft, which, to be fair, I'm sure almost nobody does. Uh, because it's a pretty, pretty significant time investment. But uh, she can do, you know, steel action and steel health. Um, which, yeah, I mean, that actually is kind of nice. And makes her a little bit... Probably especially the steel health makes her a little bit more survivable. I just don't like the fact that, um, 
you know, these can be countered. So um, that's a, a bit of a weakness. So, all right, let's use double attack and see what she's still got. Um, wow, okay, you can't even use thief craft after you've used uh, double axe craft. That's a shame. Um, so actually, I think her... I think double attack on her might be the worst version of that of everybody's. Uh, because it's so... Uh, it, it's so limited. I mean, obviously, you're limited only to this tree, so that's a real shame, but let's do uh, a paralyzing wound here. I don't know if this will work on the caster guy. Or, oh, and we just missed, so... <laughs> um, now, I will say that it was... Um, I actually have built heavily into spirit, and that's probably a bad idea, too. Um, well, it's a bad idea if you actually want to use her melee skills. That's probably just obvious, though. Uh, she really needs more dexterity. Uh, you absolutely need to be landing really, you know, everything. Otherwise, she's just completely ineffective. So, um, uh, I'll be honest. I think that, um, I actually really shouldn't have focused that much on AP as I did. But, again, it is what it is, and that's what I went with. So, um, I think, honestly, what I would recommend more is that, um, if you're going to to focus on uh, on anything other than, you know, spear, or, uh, sorry, dexterity and strength, then um, don't use her double attack. I, I just think that. Well, I mean, maybe that's obvious, right? If you want to actually use spirit skills and stuff, um, don't use double attack. The other problem with double attack is it uh, it you know it it basically makes you wait a long time after you use it too, because it's like I don't know, I don't know if it's a, a good idea to to explain it as being slow, but that's kind of how it ends up working out. Um, all right, let's use... Uh, I just want to use Cloak of Plains just to show you guys. I I wish I... I wish I could see if there was a... I'm just trying to think of, like, enemies that will use a multi-target attack right now, and I don't think I can show that. But, um... Okay, so she's still got Cloak of Plains on right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, You can kind of see her, like, blink out there for a little bit in combat. To show, and that means that she can't be targeted. So again, uh, that is actually, uh, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty good way to kind of shore up some of her defenses. But you just got to keep in mind, though, that that means that your other characters are going to be taking all of the damage. So, um, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You just need to make sure that other people are, are really tanky that are with her. Probably these two, Idril and Barathor. You could maybe make a case that you could swap out Barathor for Hadhod because Hadhod's just got a lot more health. Um, but it is what it is. So, um, man, I'm just trying to think. Let's let's actually let's use uh, Barathor's calls and just see what she uh, will even do at this point. I still think that uh, there must be some sort of level component to when you use these uh, uh, well War Call or War Cry. Uh, as to which abilities the characters will use, because I do know that right now Idril is using Loudwater Fury, but uh, earlier on in the game, and I mean, she's always had Loudwater Fury, but earlier on in the game she was using, like, regular melee attacks, so I, I suspect that there's some sort of um, level component, but... Um, Alright, so there's Idril's turn. Morwen should be up next. Oh, she, she's using Wrath of Penmark, so that's... Is that... I think that's her mid-level skill right now so yeah i don't know um i i maintain that she yeah wrath of Panmark is right here that's her four strike i don't know if she's going to be able to use better skills later but i mean i'll be honest i i just i don't like her i think that she's too weak um she's built for speed and dexterity and you probably need if you really want her to be doing any sort of respectable damage which really is what she's you know meant for uh, you need to bump up her strength, which I didn't do. I put in, I went into spirit. So, I would say, uh, as I as I mentioned before, I think she's good, and especially the way I've got her set up right now, she's good for um, hopping into combat, uh, using her different wound abilities, and then probably either swapping, yeah, probably swapping her out. Otherwise, you know, you can you can leave her on the field if you want to have uh, cloak of the planes up. But again, keep in mind that it's really expensive. And unless you've got a, I recommend Drain Spirit, again, because it can't be blocked. Um, but that saves uh, some of her, um, or, or makes it so that 
you know, she's more survivable and she's not going to get countered by trying to use, you know, steel, whatever action. Um, so that's my take on Morwen. Again, sorry uh, any if there's any Morwen uh, fans out there, but I think she's terrible. I definitely think that she's the worst character. Um, even, and, and, you know, I've built her uh, with um, a lot of spirit, almost actually all specifically spirit. And um, I, I don't know, that, that even that probably wasn't the greatest idea, though, uh, to be fair to, to me, because I think we need to be fair to me, um, having all that AP uh, by building spirit is really nice because then you can use Cloak of Planes frequently. And then still be able to do other things, though, too, because it's such a huge chunk that... Um, you know, if you use that, you know, every single, uh, or at every point that you can, you're not going to have a whole lot of AP to do other things. So that's my take on Morwen. Use her for, or I'm going to be use her, using her for the, the boss battles. Not a whole lot of anything else. Occasionally I steal with her. Uh, but again, you know, bring her into the boss fights, wound the enemies, and swap her out. Uh, that is it for Morwen. Thank you all for watching.